If you're struggling to get good quality star fields in your astro images, I'm gonna help you fix that. So we're gonna dive right in. Now, I'm a monochrome user. Uh, whether you're OSC or monochrome, this is going to be pretty much the same. So I've combined this. We have our RGB linear image. Now I've gone ahead and calibrated this and gradient corrected this. You can refer to my last Pixinsight tutorial for color calibration. So now that we have this color calibrated linear RGB combination, our next steps will be to crop, run any decon. In this case, I've ran Blur Exterminator, incorrect only mode. For denoising, I've used Deep SNR. You can use Noise X or whatever you prefer. So this is what you want to see. What you're going to want to do, make a copy. We have our processing icons that I will provide. This is from nightphotons.com. Charles Hagen has a fantastic uh, guide on this. He provides processing icons for Pixinsight, and I'm going to be featuring those in this tutorial. We're just going to drag one of these ID containers onto the image, and it automatically renames it to Starless. We're going to use this name for pixel math to recombine the stars later. After we have our Starless image, we're going to open Star Exterminator. This is still linear. So we do not have to click on screen stars. If you want to remove stars and add them back uh, in an already processed image, or it's just not in a linear state, you want to check unscreen stars. Uh, this is going to preserve your core, the star cores. So let's select generate star image. And if you have some really big stars, bright stars in the field or very heavy star field, uh, this is bordering on a heavy star field, dense, uh, but not to the point where I feel I need to toggle large overlap. Uh, we're going to leave that off. It uh, works perfectly fine without on here. I'm going to drag the triangle onto the starless, and we're going to wait for it to process. Star X has now output a stars only image. Now, this has the uh, same stretch that was applied to the now starless image. So, this was a decent intensity. You may even bump it down a bit. And if we unclick the untoggle the link RGB channels, we can move these individually. Now we've already color calibrated, uh, so we don't have to touch this at all. Chances are SPCC or more preferably manual color calibration is going to get them uh, near perfect. Now we're going to go over here to our ID container here, drag that, drop it on the stars only image. Going to let pixel math identify the correct images. This is still in linear state. We want to uh, confirm this stretch. What we're gonna do is go into histogram transformation. And what we can do, drag this screen transfer function onto the bottom bar of the histogram transformation. Now, if we disable this STF, we can then drag this now altered histogram transformation and it has applied our stretch. Now this is now uh, non-linear. So our stars are almost done. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is open curves transformation. This is where things get fun because our stars are looking a little bland. Uh, we want to really pull out that color, but not too much because we may want to uh, alter saturation or contrast after we've already combined the stars. So we don't want to get any colors uh, clipping too much. So what we're going to do is open the preview by clicking the circle. And we're gonna bump our saturation up to see just how the colors are looking. That's looking fantastic already. And obviously we've already color calibrated. Uh, chances are you're not gonna have to touch this. If I was to do anything, I may just bring reds a tad bit down. So stepping back a bit, when we were messing with the screen transfer function, we brought the channels down a bit, and that is what we that is the stretch we applied to the uh, image via histogram transformation. So I'm gonna use curves to further bring the star field intensity up just a bit. Now curves are gonna bring out some of those faint spikes while preserving the cores just a little more than histogram transformation would. So we're gonna apply this as a base and we're just gonna do a little bit more RGB curve stretching here. We can even kind of touch down those highlights a bit. We're gonna apply that again 
Gonna reset. Gonna see how that looks. It's looking fantastic. So our stars are looking pretty much final. These are looking great. We're just gonna set these aside real quick. All that's left to do is further process your starless image, and then we're gonna get to recombining stars. All right, now that we've processed our starless, we are ready to combine the stars back to the starless image. Now included in the process icons pack I mentioned earlier, there's an add stars a pixel math a container here. Now, if we just open this up, now I'm not a super pixel math nerd, but I try to use it whenever I can. Uh, I do know that this is the preferred way to add stars back to your starless image. So all we have to do is drag this onto the starless image and it has recombined our stars. And there we have it. Your stars should have excellent color and you're ready to do any further touches to your image. This was the final process uh, that I had done earlier. I really like the star colors here. This is probably my favorite. Uh, this has H alpha data added. That is going to change the look of the image in general. And as a bonus, we're going to look into creating pseudo RGB stars with narrowband data. So we have our color corrected HOO image. And again, this is using manual color calibration to just balance out the channels. We've done blur exterminator correct only, and we've applied a noise exterminator. And as with RGB, just going to use star exterminator, generate star image. This is still in linear mode, of course. All right, now right off the bat, this is going to look, whoa, really, really green. Um, all we have to do is, first of all, this is a narrowband image. We don't want a ton of stars overwhelming the nebulosity. This beautiful nebulosity in the background. So we're going to right off the bat just zoom out here on the STF. Really bring down these stars. Don't be around there is good. We can zoom in. We obviously see the green. Classic HOO stars. Now SHO is going to give that purple uh, prominence to the stars. While we're messing with the STF, uh, the main difference between SHO and HO at this stage is you're going to want to bring up the greens uh, in your STF for the SHO, stars only image. And that's going to balance out that magenta purple with the other colors. Um, and in general, you want to just get a good variation of all the colors. This is a really good baseline. So now that we've done this, we can, before we forget, go ahead and drag the ID container uh, stars on the stars only. And now we're going to take our histogram, apply the STF like we did with the RGB, disable the STF preview, and drag our histogram transformation onto the stars. We have a lot of greens. We don't want the greens. We're just going to drag and drop SCNR. It's going to delete those greens. We're going to press Control and I to invert this image. We're going to drag and drop SCNR again. Now, both of these SCNR passes are at full strength. We're going to press Control I again. That's going to bring it back to our original state. And already, look at this star color. So now that our stars are finished, I'm going to take our starless image, make sure it's named starless with the uh, ID containers over here. And we're going to go ahead and process this. And we're going to use the add stars pixel math. And that's going to go ahead and add our pseudo RGB stars to these stars. And there we have it. Excellent pseudo RGB star colors in our narrowband HOO image. All right, that concludes our star processing tutorial, looking at both RGB and narrowband. If you guys find these types of videos useful, let me know in the comments what type of processing guide you'd guys like to see in the future. And until then, this is WBH Astro, clear skies.